Hi guys, Ron here. Today, oh it is a little bright. Today I'm going to cover the case of that was portrayed in the film Alpha Dog. This is the story of Jesse James Hollywood ordering the kidnapping and then subsequent murder of Nick Markowitz, who's the half-brother of Jesse James Hollywood's target of rage, uh, Ben Markowitz, and the others involved in the case, Jesse Ruge and Ryan Hoyt, uh, and it was uh, quite an amazing thing that went down, and as usual, the cause for all this bad behavior was drugs, and in this case, the sale of drugs. So, in the year 2000, Jesse James Hollywood was a pot dealer. Now it's called weed, then it was called pot. He actually got marijuana from his father, who grew it and sold it, apparently, and Jesse James Hollywood was kind of a mid-level dealer uh, in the San Fernando Valley, in the West San Fernando Valley where I am now. And Jesse James Hollywood, he was a little guy, like 5'7", in his 20s, early 20s, most of his friends were high school dropouts. And, you know, rather than getting a job, they worked for Jesse James Hollywood and sold dope for him, uh, including Ben Markowitz. Ben Markowitz, who used and who occasionally sold for Jesse James Hollywood. I mean, they, these two guys grew up together, Jesse Hollywood and Ben Markowitz. They played Little League together, but as they got older, Ben became a real tough guy. And interesting, I mean, he was... Jewish, but he was also apparently a white nationalist and um, a tough guy, a fighter. And Jesse James Hollywood had his business. And Jesse Hollywood owned his own house because he made a lot of money from selling dope and um, or enough to have his own house. People were constantly going, they say, 24 hours a day. Evidently, that's a sign of a, of a drug house when people are coming and going at all hours. Jesse had a girlfriend named Michelle Lasher. And uh, all was going well enough in drug land until um, Ben Markowitz failed to pay Jesse for something for a payment that he owed. And uh, some bad blood became, came down between the two of them. And at one point, Jesse, or excuse me, Ben started calling and making threatening phone calls to Jesse Hollywood calling himself Little Shooter, Lil Shooter, which I guess was Ben Markowitz's pseudo gang name. Uh, and he also came by and broke a bunch of windows in Jesse's home. And actually Jesse was there with, I don't know if it was Ryan Hoyt or Jesse Ruge, but one of his his team, his, his um, crew. And after that, soon after that, he started in the process of moving out because he knew Markowitz meant business and he was afraid. Anyway, Shortly afterwards, very shortly afterwards, I believe in August of the year 2000, Jesse Ruge and I believe Ryan Hoyt was with him and definitely Jesse Hollywood were in a van. They were right in front of this, they were driving up from this direction, ended up right in front of this wall, and this wall kind of borders, there's some homes behind it, and then uh, it comes over to where the park is that I just came from. And they saw Ben Markowitz here. Excuse me, Ben Markowitz. They saw Nick Markowitz here. He was only 15 at the time. And Nick was Ben's little brother, or half brother. And they said, hey, there's Markowitz's brother. Let's go get him. They scuffled with him here. They picked him up. They pulled the van over. They picked him up. They fought with him. They threw him in the van. And, you know, ironically, at least one woman who was driving by with her kids saw it at the time and the whole event. But... I don't know whether she had a cell phone or not. In 2000, cell phones were kind of new. Not everybody had them. But she wrote down a partial license plate and then um, went home and phoned the police. But that's not how they found him. So some people saw the scuffle, and some people said they thought it was just like high school kids, guys, roughhousing. So they decided to take... Jesse decided to have the guys take... Nick Markowitz up to Santa Barbara. They got some other people involved. There were some girls. There was uh, another guy, another young guy. 
and they went up to the Santa Barbara area. They ended up staying in a motel, I believe it's called the Lemon Tree Motel. And, you know, really, he was tied up, Nick Markowitz, but he wasn't beaten after he was picked up. He was watching video games, he was smoking dope. The girls were flirting with him and hanging out with him. They called him uh, Stolen Boy. I don't think that anybody really knew the extent of what had happened, but when one of the guys decided to talk to a lawyer and said, you know, this is kidnapping, the lawyer said it's kidnapping. And when he gets back, you know, if he goes to the cops, you guys are going away for kidnapping for a long time. Um, they decided, Jesse, Jesse Hollywood decided to get his biggest disciple, Jesse Ruge, or excuse me, Ryan Hoyt, and ordered Ryan Hoyt to kill Nick Markowitz. Now, there's conjecture whether Nick Markowitz could have escaped when he was being held in that motel room. I mean, he wasn't bound the whole time. He was watching, like I say, watching video games. He was unguarded sometimes. He was uh, with the girls, hanging out, watching TV, uh, treated well for a so-called kidnap victim. And he said, apparently, and according to Jesse Ruge, he said that he wouldn't talk, he wouldn't say anything, and when he got home, he wouldn't say anything. Um, among other reasons, because he just wanted to, if it, he said if it helped his brother, Ben, with the feud he was having with Jesse, then he wouldn't say anything. He would just let, sort of let bygones be bygones. But Jesse Hollywood didn't want to take the chance and ordered the death of Nick Markowitz. So Graham Presley, another guy involved in this, a young guy, and Ryan Hoyt and Jesse Ruge all took Nick Markowitz up to a popular hiking site. You know, they, they told they, they told uh, Nick he was free. They were going to put him in the car. They said, we're driving you back to L.A. But in reality, they took him up to a hiking site north of Santa Barbara, uh, which rugged. It was 11 o'clock at night. They took him up in the mountains and um, dug a grave, came back with Nick, who until he saw the grave, you know, apparently didn't know what was going to happen to him and killed him, um, hit him with the shovel and threw him in the grave and shot him and Ryan Hoyt shot him and killed him. And um, it wasn't too long after that that they were discovered and arrested and Jesse Hollywood actually escaped arrest and he fled to, oh gosh, was it South America? I'll have to do my research on that one. And Jesse Hollywood was actually on the lam for five years. He actually married a girl in the country he was in because he believed they could avoid, uh, he would have avoided uh, extradition, but, and his father was sending him money the whole time he was down there. Uh, but he was caught and he was brought back and I believe he and Ryan Hoyt were giving, given life sentences. I don't believe the death penalty, but I believe they were given life sentences. I don't know what's up with Ben Markowitz these days. I don't know what he had to say about it. Most of you probably know about this case from Alpha Dog. I actually read a, a book on the subject before I saw the film Alpha Dog, and supposedly the film completed during the trial um, was pretty accurate. But I encourage you to read the book, any books or materials you can get on the subject as well, if you find it an interesting case like I do. Drugs always makes people do stupid things, doesn't it? Yep. Okay, folks. Well, again, my name is Ron. Uh, if you enjoy my channel, please give me likes. Please comment in the comment section if you see fit. And um, please subscribe. That I would appreciate the most. And if you do subscribe, please hit the little bell next to the subscribe button. And then you'll be alerted when I add new content. Okay, folks. That's it for today. And we'll see you at the next location. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye.